Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. And in this video, we're going to be talking about React Power Plug, which is one of my favorite components that I use in every single one of my React projects that's of a decent enough size. But before we get into that, I want to take a quick minute to talk about this video sponsor, which is Dev Mountain. So what Dev Mountain is, is, well, it's a coding bootcamp where you can go and you totally immerse yourself. And what I mean by that is, well, it's full time. So you show up to one of their locations and you stay and live there. You obviously get free housing while you do this. And there's in several different locations from Provo, Salt Lake, Dallas, and Phoenix. And you show up and basically you have access to full-time mentors, tons of courses, and the ability to just grow as a web developer, designer, app developer in a place that really encourages personal growth. So Dev Mountain is super cool because you show up and get absolutely real world training. You can see it's very career focused. They have a huge network, companies like Nike, and Reddit, and eBay, LinkedIn, Apple, HP, the list goes on and on and on. So if you're looking to really step up your career, head to devmountain.com, check out some of their locations, check out their courses, request a syllabus, take a tour of the campus, and just contact them and step up your game by taking the leap into becoming a full-time programmer, designer, any of that stuff with Dev Mountain. All right, now back to the tutorial. Okay, so now into React Power Plug, which is our first React package in this React series. So what you can see here is we have three kilobytes of gzipped, renderless, pluggable state containers, which I don't know isn't necessarily the most exciting description of something if you don't know what any of that means. But if we scroll down here, the basics of React Power Plug uh, that it handles a whole bunch of stuff for you that you may have done over and over and over again countless times in your own code. For instance, there's a toggle component where you have an on and off state and a toggle function and a set on function. So it's like, how many times have you done a toggle, right? I can think of just a hundred times where I've done a toggle and how many times have you had to write the uh, event for that, you've had to write the state for that. And what's nice about these is that, well, you could just wrap your component in a toggle and then have access to on and toggle. And you can see from this example here, let me bump up the font size. Uh, yeah, we just have a checkbox here and checked is, well, the on state, right? Whether it's on or off. And then we have the change, which is just simply a toggle function. I'm telling you, these things are just super duper handy to have around. We also have a loading component, value, index, works great for making tabs. All of these have really nice docs too. If you if you click on the C docs here, it gives you quite a bit more information about each of these components. We have set, we have list, and we have some feedback containers. They say it's like pseudo selectors, but in JS. So for instance, you get access to uh, JavaScript is hover, uh, is active. You get access to focus, is focus, bind focus. And this stuff is just really great because like I said, it's very low weight and low cost. You just sort of wrap your components in something like this and get instant access to something that before you might have to write your state, you might have to write the toggle, all of that stuff yourself. And there's some nice little form inputs here. Uh, one of the really, really cool ones is this composing components where you can see we simply use a compose function, we pass in two components, and now you've merged two components functionality. So that way you can really have these micro components such as a toggle and a counter to create a toggle counter. So just stuff to make your code a lot more dry, right? Composing components is definitely something that seems really super handy to me, although I'm not currently using it. I can think of a lot of places where I'd like to rewrite some code to use it. You can see you can even pass in initial props and stuff like that. So it's, it's more than just saying, hey, merge these two. You can merge two components that are very specifically configured. Okay, one of the cool things I like about React Power Plug, in addition to all of this, is that, well, we have code sandbox examples. So if we 
check out this use ing toggle in a checkbox. You can see it opens it up in codesinbox.io and allows us to see this thing in action. Wow, a basic toggle, it's working. But what's cool about that is that you get access to the code right here and you can see exactly what's going on. You can manipulate it and potentially see exactly, maybe a little bit more hands-on what's going on here. And on top of all of that, like I said, it's three kilobytes gzipped, so it's not that much stuff. And there's a lot of people using it. Really, really, really cool package. If you wanna see how I'm using it in level up tutorials, let me go to my header. Okay, and so here's a component, which is my user menu. You can see I'm importing toggle from React Power Plug. Let me bump up this font size temporarily here. And you can see I'm wrapping the menu in a simple toggle. Now this is how I handle my mobile menu, just wrapping everything in a toggle. I'm giving an initial state of false, so it's initially not open. And then I am just having this uh, function here and passing in on in toggle. Now, when you click on the user menu icon, we're just simply running this toggle. When I click on the nav link, I'm simply running this toggle. When I'm having a user log out, I'm clicking this toggle. And all of this is being transferred by this on property, right? The menu only shows if you have the on. Now you might be thinking, this is cool and all, but like, do I need this? Like, I could write a toggle myself. Yeah, you can write a toggle yourself, but how easy is this to simply just import a component, drop in some stuff like this, and instantly have access to the function? So components in React Power Plug by no means are doing things that you could never do without it, but they're going to make your life easy, and that's one of the reasons why I really like this package. So check it out, React Power Plug, definitely something I am super into, really like this package, a lot of cool stuff, and a lot of possibilities for uh, time saving. If you like this video and want to learn more about React, you can head to leveluptutorials.com forward slash store and check out React 16 for Everyone, which is my latest series on React. In fact, the new series coming to Level Up Tutorials in December is going to be on React as well, except for this time React and Redux. So if you want to learn a lot about the basics of React, head over to leveluptutorials.com forward slash store and purchase React 16 for Everyone or sign up to become a Level Up Pro and get access to every series every single month. The moment they're released. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.